YouTube. In today's video, we take a look at the Galaxy S22 Ultra from last year's past into the now Galaxy S23 Ultra. At a quick glance, you're going to look and say, yo, what is different between these two? Although there's so much in common, there's so much that separate these two. It's like the key factors and the key changes going from one year to the other, which brings up the question, should you upgrade from a Galaxy S22 Ultra and jump in on the S23 Ultra? How has Samsung improved this device year over year? There's a lot to talk about, a lot of debates in this conversation. We're going to break it all down. This is the versus of the Galaxy S22 Ultra versus the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Let the games begin. Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. Click the link in the description box to get a free 30 day free trial. Everything you post during your trial is protected from all copyright claims, even if you cancel. Epidemic Sound is a great tool for online video creators to soundtrack their videos without receiving copyright strikes or worrying about takedowns. Epidemic Sound has a huge library of music and sound effects with new tracks added every week. All tracks are professionally produced by a diverse collection of artists and exclusive to Epidemic Sound. The personal plan is ideal for content creators as it covers most platforms including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and podcasts. The commercial plan is the perfect choice for freelancers, businesses, and agencies looking to soundtrack commercial productions. You're allowed to monetize your videos and won't have to worry about videos being demonetized, receiving strikes, or being flagged for unlicensed usage. And then you have the Epidemic Sound app where you can discover, save, and download music and sound effects on the go. Browse the catalog by genre, mood, or theme, organize music and playlists, or save for later with just one tap on a heart icon. Use the link down in the description below to get your access to a 30 day free trial to Epidemic Sound. Okay, so let's get into it, design and build quality. All right, so let's take a look at these two from a design standpoint. S23 Ultra in the white cream, S22 Ultra in this phantom black, matte black, everything vibe. Now from a design perspective, you're gonna look at these two and you're gonna say, yo, what is different? Because literally the metrics and the sizing is almost identical with a few changes. The big change this year is here on the siding. We start here with the S22 Ultra, which has that infamous rounded glass into this rounded siding. Now, from a handheld perspective, it's actually pretty decent on the hand, but until having this new S23 Ultra with the flatter, slightly rounded edges, I didn't know that it could be even better. Handheld between these two devices, the S23 Ultra hands down is the better handheld experience in my opinion. It offers absolute confidence and peace of mind. And I don't think you could go wrong with that, especially if you choose to rock your smartphones without a case. From a weight perspective, not much is different. I mean, the S23 Ultra is a heftier 234 grams versus last year's 228 gram S22 Ultra. Hand in hand, left or right, I'm not feeling that much of a difference, to be honest. Now, in the camera housing, things have changed design-wise because we have a different 200 megapixel camera versus the 108 megapixel. Same in the front facing. We actually downgraded from the mega, what was it, like 40 some odd megapixel or 50 megapixel front facing camera all the way down to a 12 megapixel front facing camera. So from a design perspective, things are very much different, especially when you get into the hardware, the inner microchips and things that we're going to get into in a second. But again, display, design, build is almost identical. I'm pretty sure these are probably the same AMOLED panels. These are the displays that we all know and love and appreciate over the years. And I'm appreciating them even more now that I'm on the natural setting. No more vivid for me. I can't say that either panel is better than the other because obviously I believe that they are the exact same panel. We're talking the exact same resolution at 1440 by 3088 with a 500 PPI density. So what's the difference? Nothing much, honestly, from a design and display standpoint. These are neck and neck. Let's get into the area of platform. Now platform, again, you can upgrade your Galaxy S22 Ultra to have 
One UI 5.1 and Android 13. So no difference in software and platform because this is running the exact same. Android 13 with a One UI 5.1 skin. And let me say this, One UI 5.1 this year is amazing. The improvements made over the previous One UIs is something to appreciate. I feel like Samsung has taken the critique well and they've kind of dialed back without taking away any of the feature pack goodness that they are known for in their One UI. We still have all of the features, all of the goodness, all of the sauce, but just from a visual standpoint and from a what you can do standpoint has improved. Like I have good luck on this S23 Ultra to allow me to get a similar experience to what I'm used to with Nova Launcher. I'm usually right out the box Nova Launcher because of this clean setup that I have here. Still, I feel like Nova Launcher has the edge over One UI 5.1 for me, but I can see myself using One UI 5.1 and getting along as a longtime Nova Launcher user. But again, this clean setup with these hidden folders is my go-to. Now the big thing in the platform that's different is the processing chip. The S23 Ultra has that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 4 nanometer chipset that's in every S23 Ultra worldwide. Whereas the S22 Ultra had the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 4 nanometer, but they also had the Exynos 2200 going around the world. So unless you were in the States, you didn't have the luxury of the Snapdragon. But the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is the Snapdragon to have. This is the best optimized combination with One UI 5.1 on the Samsung platform to date. It's smooth as butter. It is refined. It is optimized. It is the experience that we've all wanted on a Samsung device. Not to take away from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 because this was like we were almost there. Slightly optimized, getting closer. But this we are here, we have arrived. The Adreno 740, one of the fastest GPUs in the game. Adreno 730, still a powerhouse. You know what I'm saying? So from a performance standpoint, the biggest separating factor, although there is a bit more horsepower under this device, is optimization. Which brings me to the next topic of discussion, and that's gonna be battery life. Battery, battery, and more battery if you need battery, is on the S23 Ultra by far. Every year on devices like the S22 Ultra and previous flagships, you see such a subjective and objective opinion about battery life. But this year is the first year when it comes to battery life where everyone's on the same page with the S23 Ultra. I have yet to see anyone say anything negative about this battery life because it is that good. And it deserves the reward that it gets because honestly from a versus standpoint perspective of battery life there's no competition hands down s23 ultra is the better battery life experience but i'll say this if you're an s22 ultra user and if you're doing fine on battery and you're getting by with this device then continue to do so there's no need to rush over battery unless that's a necessity but also keep in mind your upgrade cycles don't make any crazy decisions because if the S23 Ultra is this good, I would hope that the S24 Ultra is just as good if that's your upgrade cycle. If you understand where I'm going with this, patience. But after talking about battery, we got to get into, oh wait, you know what? Before I go to the next subject, let's talk about speakers. I don't have to turn on the speakers for you to understand this. Just take my word for it. Everyone complained about the S22 Ultra speaker performance versus previous flagships, and they were right. It was not the typical that we know and love and appreciate from Samsung flagships. Samsung got called out, Samsung was wrong, and Samsung rectified with the S23 Ultra. These speakers are by far better and more improved and more of the norm that we expect from Samsung. So just wanna throw that note in there before we start talking about the next category, which is going to be cameras. This is where a lot of things are different on the spec sheet, 200 megapixels versus 108 megapixels. 
I think when it comes to the telephoto and the ultra wide and the other, you know, cameras, not much is different except for on the front facing camera. We are going from a 40 megapixel front facing camera down to a 12 megapixel front facing camera with the intention of better low light performance. And there's only one way to find out. Let's take these cameras outside and knock it out head to head and keep your bias aside and just keep it real. Let's go. Now, I won't lie, this head to head, I'm excited for it because we got the S22 Ultra front facing camera against the S23 Ultra's front facing camera. And a lot of things have changed. Um, the 22 Ultra's front facing camera had a lot more megapixels, which were reduced this year in the S23 Ultra. And the main reason that was done was to allow more light in, allowing for better low light performance. Here we are head to head. I'm looking at both of them, trying to stare at both cameras, two cameras at once going cross-eyed and stuff. Which front facing camera is looking better to you? Hit the comment section down below. Hold your bias, baby. <laughs> and things continue to still get interesting because now we have rear wide angle lenses on both cameras shooting both in 8K resolution. Now, 8K on the S22 Ultra right here. Let me know what it's looking like versus 8K video from the rear wide angle on the S23 Ultra. I just wanna put the best foot forward from both devices so that way we can see who's doing it better. And if also the upgrade is anything worth having in the camera department. Let's go to the Ultra Wide. Now when it comes to the Ultra Wide between these two, I'm not expecting much of a difference. Same thing when I go to the uh, telephoto zoom, which is next. Um, I'm expecting these to be similar to on par with each other but the biggest difference even though if the sensors are physically the same or similar in the closest way it's the processing because the processor is different this year with the s23 ultra we got that snapdragon 8 gen 2 which is going to process photos imaging and graphics and a new gpu hardware as well on this side it's going to process a lot of things differently than the previous generation which is this s22 ultra so there can be a significant to non-significant difference between the two that's why i need you guys to hit the comment section down below and let me know your unbiased truthfully honest opinion thank you i don't have my camera out because it's supposed to be a rainstorm coming honestly on the displays i'm seeing different but i think that's because i have my s22 ultra on vivid screen versus natural which i'm going to switch that soon so you guys let me know below which 3x telephoto zoom is looking better I'm gonna switch it to 10x next in this shot, which is just gonna be that up close goodness. You guys let me know if there's any difference. These are the 10x shots on S23 Ultra and S22U. Okay, so you guys saw these two mega camera housings go head to head, and I need you guys to hit the comment section and let me know which one you would truly believe is better. Because let's be honest, this is year over year, how much has changed? Or maybe a lot did. Let me know down in the comment section below. With all of that being said, let's round this out with user experience. The most important category to talk about. We could talk spec sheets. We could talk the changes. We could talk about flat edges versus rounded. We could talk about these devices being the same or not. But at the end of the day, spec sheets don't matter. Only thing that matters is your user experience, which is what comes into the reality of why you may or may not want to upgrade or need to upgrade. These two devices are pretty much neck and neck year after year, but let's get real. The S22 Ultra user experience is a flagship experience that's great and serves so many consumers to this day. There's a lot of people who could pick up this device on discount and appreciate it in 2023. I mean, this is the top of the line in phone slabs that Samsung has to offer. But there were areas for improvement. And in those areas of necessary improvements, Samsung gave us the S23 Ultra. And those areas of improvement were simple. Better battery life, we got that. Better optimization, they gave us that. This One UI 5.1 with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is bringing the optimized performance on the Android device with the Samsung platform that we all 
should know and love and appreciate. Now, there's also the cameras on this device. Now, I don't know what the versus is going to look like. I won't see that until the end when I'm, you know, editing and uh, putting this video together. But I can say the pro mode on the S23 Ultra has impressed me significantly. The AK video is nice. You get AK video on this one. Uh, you do have pro modes on both devices. The difference is on the S23 Ultra, you could do pro mode on a front facing camera as well as the rear with the S22 Ultra only on the rear. The user experience is all about the collective. When you put everything together and you add it up, what do you get? Honestly, with the S22 Ultra, you get a significant flagship experience with a few missing nuts and bolts. And that's in the area of the battery life is sufficient for most and a lot, but not for everyone. The S23 Ultra gives you a battery life that's for everyone. You get a smooth experience on this device, but it's still not as optimized as it could be. You get the optimization that you wanted and more on the S23 Ultra. Cameras, I mean, that's personal preference. You're gonna get a good camera no matter which one of these devices you go with. So should you upgrade from an S22 Ultra to an S23 Ultra? That's personally comes down to your budget, actual need, and your actual wants. Let's be real, not everything is a need. Sometimes we go for our wants, and I'm not here to judge. But I can say this, the S23 Ultra in its current state is the Android smartphone to beat. It's the Android smartphone to experience, but it's not necessarily a necessity to upgrade when it comes to the S22 Ultra, but it's definitely a phone worth enjoying and experiencing if you have the means to.